Hi, I'm Becky Stern, and today I'll show you how to level up your Arduino coding skills and write programs that don't use delays. When you first learn to code for Arduino, you probably use the built-in delay function to create pauses in between other commands, such as LED animations. But what happens when you want to monitor an input? The Arduino isn't listening to the input during the delay. Sure, you could use interrupts, as discussed in a previous episode, but they're not the right solution for everything. There's a way to ditch the delay entirely. Follow along with me and open up the Arduino built-in example under File, Examples, O2 Digital, Blink Without Delay. This example makes use of the Arduino built-in timer function called millis. This represents the number of milliseconds since the program started running. First up, it establishes the pin connected to the LED, in this case, the built-in LED, which is on pin 13 on the Arduino Uno and its clones. Then we're setting up a variable to keep track of the state of the LED called LED state. Next is a variable declaration to hold an amount of time in milliseconds. So we're using an unsigned long, which is a way bigger variable bucket than an integer. And that one's called previous millis. The last declaration is a constant to store the amount of time you want to use as your interval of the blink. And it's set to 1,000 milliseconds or one second. The only thing inside the setup is the pin initialization for the LED pin, which needs to be set up as an output. Inside the loop, it's constantly updating a variable called current millis using the timer function millis. So we can do some math against this ever-changing number to time out the rest of the program. Here, that happens inside this if statement checking to see if the difference between the last time we entered the if statement and now is greater than our defined interval of 1,000 milliseconds. The condition is satisfied when it's been one second since the last time. Then the previous millis variable is reset to the current time, and the state of the LED is flipped with this if-else statement here, then written to the LED pin. So once you upload this code to your Arduino board, you will see the same blinking behavior as when you first took it out of the package. But the difference is now you can add some input code to your loop and it will be responsive throughout the program's runtime. So now I've added a button as the digital input and the circuit on the left is running the original blink example using delay and the circuit on the right is running our new sketch using the millisecond timer and no delay. See how the circuit using delay missed out on the button presses that happened during the delay? And with the new code, a button press is recognized at any time. This is a great example to start any Arduino project where you want to combine LED animations with inputs while keeping them responsive. If you're not worried about super accurate timing, instead of using millis, you could just create your own counter. The program continually increases a counter and then checks if this counter value has exceeded a certain maximum number. If the counter value shoots past this preset maximum, your Arduino runs some code and then resets the counter. Because your board's clock speed is relatively consistent, the counter will typically surpass the maximum value at a regular frequency. But if you load the code onto another board with a different clock speed, it can make your interval either shrink or stretch. One final method to avoid using delay is to use hardware timers, which vary in availability based on the processor. We're mostly talking about AVR boards with this one but you can read more about your device's hardware timers if available in the board's documentation. They'll reset to zero and execute a callback function when they reach their maximum. There's some example code using this method in the article that goes along with this video, which you can find at the link in the description. Now, it's important to remember that the Arduino's internal clock isn't perfect because of the simple crystal oscillator used for the timing. So if you need ultra-precision timing that doesn't drift over time, this method alone isn't for you. Consider adding a real-time clock module instead or connect to the internet to query the time online. Let me know in the comments if you want me to make an episode about using those methods that don't rely on the internal clock. 
And if you still want to use delay in your sketches with the full understanding that it will limit the responsiveness of your inputs, go right ahead. More advanced programmers will call it bad practice, but I believe in leveraging the tools you've got and not being made to feel bad about it. Yes, it's good to learn why delay can be disadvantageous, but it's not wrong to use it if it works for you and your project. I've put links to some resources in the description. Leave your advice in the comments so we can all learn together. Check out the playlist with the rest of the series and subscribe to be sure you don't miss the next one.